All right, good morning, class. We're going to talk today about working with the supply and demand model, in particular, focusing on three outcomes that you're going to see. Right? In every case, you're either going to have a market that's in equilibrium, a market that's representing a shortage, or a market where you observe a surplus. Right? And so we're going to talk about the differences between all three of those uh, occurrences, and also why it's the case that over the long run, you're always going to get pushed to the situation where a market is in equilibrium. So let's start by taking a look at the graph that you have right here on the board behind me. This is going to show the market for any particular good. I picked avocados. I like avocados. You can see that the demand curve is down with sloping. That's just telling us that when avocados are pricier, the amount that buyers are willing and able to buy is, is smaller, of course. And when it comes to firms, it's the opposite. Low prices mean that firms aren't going to be willing to sell too much. And then as that price gets higher and higher, firms respond by wanting to sell more and more. As with a lot of things in economics, you want to take a look at this particular spot where our lines are intersecting, this spot right here. On the graph that we're dealing with, this represents the equilibrium in the market for avocados. What that means in simpler terms is that if we disallow buyers and sellers to act in their own interests, we think that the actual price that, end, that people end up paying is going to be associated with this price right here. That looks like two bucks based on the setup that I've introduced. And then this quantity right there would be the equilibrium quantity. Right? So this is going to be the actual price and amount of avocados that we actually observe. All right, so why is that the case? We're always going to move to or gravitate towards this equilibrium. What's so great about this particular spot? Right? How do we know we end up here? All right, so for the purposes of our demonstration, let's just assume that we're not at this equilibrium. We're not observing $2 for avocados. Let's see what would happen if we saw a different price. So I'm going to pull the board over here. And in this next scenario, let's assume that the price happens to be lower than the equilibrium. So we're not seeing two bucks for an avocado. Instead, let's just say that the price is only 50 cents per avocado. So that's pretty cheap. We want to look to the supply curve and demand curve to get some inference about how these groups are going to respond. Right? So if we read over from 50 cents, the first curve that we run into, that comes from the supply curve. So that eight would represent our quantity supplied. So that's a small number, right? That's only eight avocados. The interpretation of this point is that when the price is 50 cents, sellers are willing and able to sell only eight avocados. And that should, uh, you should expect that to be a relatively low quantity because, of course, it's hard to make a profit if you're selling your good at a low price. So we see not much available for sale. When we read over to the demand curve, we're going to see that buyers respond in the opposite fashion. Right? Of course, if you can get avocados for only 50 cents, buyers think that's wonderful, and they want to buy lots more than they did before. So the quantity demanded at the price of 50 cents is 100 avocados. So we have the situation where quantity supplied and quantity demanded are no longer in balance. Buyers want a whole bunch. Sellers are only willing to sell a smaller amount. The term that we use to describe such a situation is that there's a shortage. Right? There's not enough of this particular good for everybody who wants one at that particular price. This is not something that we would expect to see persisting for very long. And the reason for that is because prices can oftentimes adjust fairly easily. Right? If it's the case that there are 100 people lined up trying to buy avocados and only eight people willing and able to sell avocados, of course that price is gonna get bid up. So whenever you see a shortage, you can predict that there'll be upward pressure on the price of that good. It's gonna get pushed back up until we approach that equilibrium. So you can see this sort of a situation temporarily, but you wouldn't expect a price below that equilibrium for a very long time because there would be a shortage which drives up the price. The logic is really similar for thinking about reasons why, or thinking about the explanation for why we wouldn't see a price uh, up above that equilibrium for too long. So I'm just gonna slide this over a little bit now and think about a situation where we have really high prices relative to the equilibrium, right? So now let's, Assume that the price of avocados is up at five bucks, right? Your intuition should tell you that sellers are going to think this is great, right? Those people selling avocados are going to do everything that they can to bring avocados to market because you can make some money. You can make some profit if you're able to get your product sold for a higher price. Correspondingly, the quantity supplied at a price of five bucks is some large amount. This is saying 200 avocados are available for sale if the price is five bucks. 
Again, your logic should tell you that that higher price is going to cause a reduction in quantity demanded. Buyers, in other words, aren't going to want to buy as much as they did before. And so if the price is up there at five bucks, the graph is telling me that only five avocados are demanded from everybody. And so once again, we're not in balance. Quantity supplied does not equal quantity demanded. In this case, the language that you want is that there's a surplus, right? That's gonna happen whenever the price is up in this range of the graph, up above the equilibrium. And this has the opposite impact on price. When there's a surplus, that price should fall until that surplus goes away we move back to that situation where we're in equilibrium and quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. Um, so really I want to stress then that this key, the key mechanism here to tell you why we get pushed to this particular outcome, this equilibrium situation where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded is because for every other price that you might encounter, there's necessarily going to be a shortage or a surplus. And that's going to cause the price to move to push us back to that equilibrium. There you go.